So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil kareem amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim What I intend to do at least once a week if Allah wills bi-idhnillah I'm going to go over some of the more classical works this is the work by Imam Sayyuti on the Musnad of Aisha radiyallahu anha and so inshallah the barakah of going through all of the ahadith that Imam Sayyuti collected, because many scholars collected, you know, tried to collect all of the narrations by Aisha radiallahu anha, Imam Ibn Hajar did it, other scholars did it. But I want to go over the Musnad of Aisha radiallahu anha as uh, recorded by Imam Sayyuti. Okay? And so uh, this will also give you a chance to brush up on Arabic. And get used to the Hadith literature, which is different from the Quranic literature. Okay, and uh, as many of you know, I have dyslexia, so sometimes I have a hard time saying the word. But I will translate it properly because the in- input is correct, the output is not sometimes as correct in my mind. So we start Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalat wassalam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen Muhammadin al-Amin. يا من استسلم كل شيء بقدرتك زدنا علما زدنا علما وبصيرا اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد كان النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أخرج من الغائط the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he إذا أخرج when he came out from the using the bathroom قال he would say, Ghufranak. O oh Allah, I ask your maghfirah. Ghufranak, I ask for your forgiveness. Now, uh, there are two things here. Number one, of course, it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, because the Prophet did it to ask for Allah's forgiveness. But the ummati asking for forgiveness and the Prophet asking for forgiveness, these are two different uh, things. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, and the believers at the very high level that when you're in the bathroom and you're not allowed to remember Allah so sometimes the believers they're asking Allah to even forgive us for that moment where we were not even allowed which is also obeying Allah you're obeying Allah not remembering Allah but you're then asking forgiveness that how could I not remember Allah How did? why did I put myself in that position so, anyhow, it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to say ghufranak when you come out of the bathroom. This should be uh, ghufranak also because we get touched by shaitan. Ghufranak also because, uh, you know, uh, the, the situation of uh, relieving yourself has to do with najas. And so spending time with najas uh, also, maybe if you nowadays, many people they end up spending a lot of extra time in the bathroom. So, ghufranak. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and you to always remember to say at least, ghufranak. Oh Allah, we ask your forgiveness every time we come out of the bathroom. And then, in terms of the Prophet, uh, you know, his ghufranak would simply be, you know, the sun. Uh, uh, became colder uh, by you know five degrees or six degrees or ten degrees or hundred degrees, meaning it's still the burning sun, but for itself, yani, uh, like the prophet is like the sun, right? And so uh, the sun uh, became. Uh, what does it mean if you say the sun became less in degree? Does it mean uh, much? Anyhow, Allah knows best. Okay, so this is the meaning of. Ghufranak, Allah forgive me, and we should make this a habit to say this uh, while we're in the washroom, and especially to get used to saying this when we are in the wilderness in the future, okay, in the wilderness in the future, you don't know if you hurt some jinn or some animal or something and you were using the bathroom, so you did something unintentionally, uh, Ghufranak, okay, so let's go to the next hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Bismillah, the hadith number two. كان النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
إذا تودع فيده في الماء. So the first thing, when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا تودع when he would start to do wudu, فودع يده he would place his hand in the vessel. You know, there's a vessel with water in it. So he would place his water, his hands in the vessel. Okay. Samma. Samma means he would say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. After doing that, so he would place his hands in the water and say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now I'm not going to go over the fiqh debates of if you have to say Bismillah before wudu or not. We'll leave that when we talk about things from a legal perspective. How do you know something is, if the Prophet did something, if it's a sunnah, not a sunnah, so on and so forth. فَتَوَدَّعَ And he would make wudu. وَسَبْعَ wudu. Now, one meaning of this uh, is that he would watch each part of his body seven times. Now, of course, that would be a Shah's opinion. The other opinion about this meaning is that the vessel in which you put your hands in to do wudu would be washed seven times. So that is probably the more correct opinion. Okay, But what is the main point here? Is that you have to be very careful about the water's cleanliness. And you place your hand in the water only when you know your hands are tahir, when your hands are clean. And you do your wudu. And then you have to make sure that the utensils you're using are pure and clean, even if it means you have to wash it seven times, okay, and you place your hand into the water to start doing the wudu, this is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. of course this is one of the lost sunnahs, but when we're out in the wilderness, in the mountainous areas, and we have vessels to do wudu, we can resume the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, that you have a vessel with clean water in it, and you know, the Prophet ﷺ was very particular about the cleanliness of the water in the vessels. He would say, don't even breathe in it. Okay, don't even breathe your air into this vessel. So, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا تودع فودع يده في الماء سمى فيتودع وسبع سبع الوضوء. Okay, and of course, once in your lifetime, if you want, you can do wudu with each part of your body seven times just to fulfill the sunnah that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, maybe she meant it from that perspective and Allah knows best. Okay? Hadith number three. Kana Nabiu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And every time, time I say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what should you be doing? You should be also saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if I say radiyallahu anha, you should also say radiyallahu anha to have the best benefit. Kana Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaghtasil, even though the reader doesn't necessarily have to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the name of the Prophet is mentioned. But it's other to do so. And uh, there, there may be reasons like you're giving a speech or something and you forget, it's okay. But if you're the listener and you hear the name Muhammad, you have to uh, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and if it's reference to the Prophet saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, is the best uh, route to take. Okay. Can a Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqtasil min qarq or farq uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used wa huwa qadh wa kuntu aqsiluhu ana wa huwa min ina'ul wahid the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aisha radiallahu anha says the Prophet Yaqtisil, he is to take a shower. Min, min, the real word is qarq. But the, you know, the nuskhas, the, the copies, some of them said farq. And then some of them, uh, they used other words. Wahua, and it was a big vessel. Wa kuntu aqsilu ana wahua. Me and him both used to take our ghusl after having intimacy, right? From the same big bowl of water. So there would be a big bucket. Okay, and wahua min ina il wahid from the same, uh, from the same, uh, you can say bucket. So there would be one big bucket, okay, and uh, the Prophet and Aisha, they're both taking a shower after intimacy from the same bucket. 
This is one of the sunnahs of the Prophet وسلم, that married couples can also uh, follow. Um, hadith number four, An Aisha radiyallahu anha, she says, Kuntu aqsilu ana wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ina'il wahid. Me and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take a shower from the same vessel, meaning the big bucket. Okay, so it would be a sunnah to have one big bucket from which the husband and the wife can take a shower. وَنَحْنُ جُنُبَانِ And we were in a state of being junub, meaning because of intimacy, the state of junub. And in addition to that, in other times, وَكُنْتُ أَخْتَصِلُ رَأْسُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ and I used to wash the head of the Prophet Wasallam, and, and this is uh, to give, give you an idea of what she is referring to is, look, the Prophet's house was attached to the masjid. So let's say, uh, I'm, you know, if this is my house and I go out the door, it's in the masjid, right? So now the Prophet is in the masjid, but he puts his head by the door of this house. So he's out, the, his, his body is out, but his head is near the inside the house. So Aisha radiallahu anha, when he would, wa she would wash his head and he would be in itikaf, but she would put oil on his head and so on and so forth. And so she said, I would wash his head and he would be what? Mu'takib fil masjid. And he would be doing itikaf in the masjid. Wa ana ha'id. While I was in my uh, cycles. Okay. وَكَانَ يَعْمُرُنِي And the Prophet ﷺ would command me إِذَا كُنْتُمْ حَائِدًا And at other times, meaning when he's not in a tikaf, uh, he would command me when I would be haid, uh, 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 meaning to wear an awzar, a cloth over myself, meaning in my private areas. ثُمَّ يُبَاشِرْنِي And then he would also sleep with me and do other what is generally in today's world called, you know, um, uh, foreplay. So, you know, the Prophet ﷺ would, uh, um, even though she's in her period, he would obviously having uh, intimacy uh, or sex would be haram. But anything else uh, that doesn't uh, have to do with that, you can do. And Aisha radiallahu anha would put an extra piece of cloth around her and azar around her self. Okay, so this is how the Prophet sallallahu dealt with the situation. As you know, in the Jewish religion, women are told to leave the house or some of these some of these things. Somebody can do research on this question, but generally it is known that the rulings of uh, periods and haid amongst the Jewish people is very uh, strict. Uh, okay, next hadith the Aisha radiallahu anha says, Kuntu akhtasilu ana wa Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ana il wahid. Me and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to do ghusl from the same vessel. Fa wada'a yadana ma'nan. And we both used to have our hands in the vessel together. So, you know, the Prophet is taking water from the um, from the vessel and putting it on himself. And she is with the Prophet took, putting her hands in the vessel and take doing her ghusl. Okay, so both of them are doing ghusl together. Now, why is she saying this? Because, you know, they were living in a time where, uh, especially being in Medina where a lot of Jews were maybe, but she's making clear that this there's uh, this is jais, this is mubah, this is allowed. There's nothing wrong with the husband and the wife putting their hands in the water together to purify themselves. And in the next hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, Kuntu akhtasilu ana wa Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ana il wahid. Again, same point. Me and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take a bath from the same vessel, from the same bucket. Lakin nahu kana yabda'a. But he yabda, kana yabda. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be the one to initiate. Number one, this could mean that it is sunnah for the husband to start the process of doing ghusl when husband and wife are together. Meaning it's not fard, it's not wajib, it's sunnah. 
It's Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And of course, he would be the one that would start because Aisha is going to copy everything the Prophet is doing. So Aisha radiallahu anha is copying the Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ is the one who is starting. But how does this become Sunnah for us? It becomes a Sunnah for us that that uh, the Sunnah is that the man start his ghusl with his wife first. So the Prophet would start the ghusl and then his wife would join him. And that can be done even in today's times in different ways. Okay, uh, for example, the uh, husband goes into the shower first, and then the wife. And for the people that have the uh, the strength to accept it, that even though the husband and wife are equal in type of in terms of hakuk, but this is a way of showing the faldila uh, of uh, the husband over the wife. Okay. But in terms of friendship, I want to say that, you know, obviously, a man that is having, taking his ghusl with his wife, this is like the, in a sense, a ultimate form, form of friendship, right? It's the ultimate form of, uh, there's no um, embarrassment, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but there's no takalluf, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, there's no, like trying to be something you're not uh and so on the one side is this kind of like friendship between the husband and wife on the other side is that i believe imam Nawi uh or some of maybe the other uh, uh scholars have written that the uh from one vessel is also meaning that to conserve the water as much as possible uh rather than one takes a full bucket then the next takes a full bucket well why not just do it together and conserve water in this way. Okay. Uh, the next hadith, uh, an Aisha radiallahu anha, anna Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qabala ba'dun nisa. And so Aisha is narrating this hadith to a, uh, the rawi, urwa. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, urwa uh, radiallahu anha, he uh, is the one who's listening to this. And she's, he's hearing, I should say this, that the Prophet would kiss his wives before going out to pray. And this is one of the sunnahs of the Prophet wasallam to kiss your wife before you uh, before you pray. So, an Aisha radiallahu anha, anna Nabi Muhammad wasallam qabala ba'dun nisa, he would kiss one, some of his wives, kharaja ila salah, thumma kharaja ila salah. Then he would go and pray, وَلَمْ يَتَوَضَّ And he would not make wudu in between. So, touching the wife didn't break the wudu. Now, of course, in the Shafi Mazhab, they have uh, the idea that if you touch your wife, uh, you know, what will happen? I won't go into the fiqhi aspects right now. قَالَ urwa And so, when Urwa, radiyallahu an, when he was hearing this from Aisha, radiyallahu anha, قُلْتُ مَنْ هِيَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ who can that be that you're talking about that he would kiss one of his wives and then go to or some of his wives and go to prayer? Who is he? Who are you talking about but yourself? Fadahikat. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she laughed at the fact that, you know, it is obvious, but, she, you know. So, hadith number eight. In the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yumuru bil qadr. Bil qadr. So the Prophet ﷺ, he would have wudu and he would pass by, let's say the kitchen or the place where the people are cooking food. And he would eat from it, minha al arq some meat or something cooked. Then he would pray after eating the meat. Okay. Or add eating the cooked food. Because some of the fuqaha, they have the opinion that if you cook the food or if you eat uh, meat, you have to do wudu again. And some of the scholars say it's better to uh, wash your mouth after eating. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, so over here the Prophet didn't even touch the water, meaning he didn't even uh, wash his, uh, didn't uh, put water in his mouth. And uh, he would eat and didn't ha didn't repeat wudu, so it's allowed. And the Prophet did a lot of these things 
to make it clear that these things are allowed, even though his normal sunnah would be what? That after you eat, you wash your hands, after you eat, uh, you know, and then you can also, some of the scholars have recommended at least uh, putting water in your mouth and uh, making things clean. But eating does not break wudu, okay? And eating cooked meals uh, and cooked meat, this hadith gives the, um, reinforces the opinion, the validation of the fact that cooked meat and, and cooked food does not break wudu, uh, as many of the great fuqaha have that opinion also. Hadith number nine, in talaka Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fayabul, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to take, uh, you know, to uh, relieve himself in the bathroom. فَأَتْبَعَهُ Umar بِالْمَا So Umar radiallahu anh, because it was most of the time the Prophet would do wudu after using the washroom. So Umar followed him with water. فَقَالَ مَا هَذَا يَا Umar. So the Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا هَذَا يَا Umar. What is this Umar? فَقَالَ He said, مَا تَتَوَدَّعْ بِي this is water, so you can do wudu, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala, ma umirtu kullama ba'ultu an atawadda'a. I have not been commanded that what every time I use the washroom, that I should do wudu. Law fa'altu, if I did this every single time, la kanat sunnah, then it would become a sunnah. Okay, so the Prophet didn't do it every time. And also, it is sunnah not to do it every single time following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But most of the time, one should try their best to always keep wudu all the time. And that when you do wudu, uh, you, when you use the bathroom, you should come out doing wudu. Okay? Even though it's not a sin or not haram, it's mubah, but most of the time you should try to do wudu and keep wudu all the time. Okay? Uh, that is a very good method of always being vigilant and not being lazy in regards to the deen. Hadith number 10. An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kan Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha arada yanam. So for example, let's say someone had intimacy with his wife and now you want to go to sleep. Wa huwa junub. And he's in a state of impurity. Tawadda'a. He would make wudu. So even though if he didn't do ghusl immediately, the Prophet would at least make wudu, right? Uh, wudu lis salah. In the same manner, he would make wudu for the salah, okay? With the same, uh, so not not to be in a state of complete junub completely. If you are in a state of junub, it's still better to do, like instead of ghusl, you do wudu. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu to do that after one is junub. Okay, so an Aisha radiallahu uh, Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kana Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha arada an yanam wa huwa junub tawadda'a wa du'li salah wa idha kana arada an ya'kul ghasal uh, ghasal yadayhi thumma a'kul So the hadith is saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he would have irada to sleep while he's junub, he would make wudu, as we already discussed, wudu lis salah, just as you do wudu for salah. Wa idha arada an yakul, and when he would make the irada to eat, even though he he's going to eat, even though what he uh, he's in a state of junub, what would he do? Ghasala yadayhi thumma akul. He would wash his hands and then eat, particularly after having intimacy. Okay, uh, then in another narration, you'll find now this kind of like, uh, sometimes the Prophet did this and sometimes the Prophet did this. And Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, kana Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha kana junubun faarada an ya'kul aw yanam fatawadda'a wudu lis salah. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha kana junubun, when he would be in a state of impurity, فَأَرَادْ أَنْ يَعْكُلْ and he made the intention to eat, أو ينام, or to sleep, فَتَوَدَّعْ and he would make wudu, wudu, wudu lis salah. In the same manner, he made wudu for salah. Okay? So this is 
sometimes uh, you're in a state of junub and you want to eat, you wash your hands. Sometimes you want you're in a state of junub and you want to eat or sleep, then you make uh, wudu. But mostly it is the sunnah of the Prophet to make wudu for sleeping and for eating, either washing the hands or doing wudu. And we all know doing wudu is better than washing the hands. Next hadith, an Ghaith bin Harth, he was a Tabari, qala ataytu Aisha radiallahu anha, I came to our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, faqultu, and I asked her, I said to her, araayta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi awwal al-layli kana yaghtasil min janaya am fi akhirah. Uh, so he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, did the, when the Prophet would be in a state of junub, okay, or when he used the bathroom, okay, would he do ghusl in the beginning of the night or at the end of the night? فَقَالَتْ And she said, رُبَّمَا اِخْتَصَلَ فِي أَوَّلِ اللَّيْلِ Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would do it in the beginning part of the night. وَرُبَّمَا And perhaps, or meaning in other times, he would do اِخْتَصَلَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ and sometimes he would do it in the latter part of the night. So the Prophet was very flexible, alhamdulillah, in all of this, right? Next uh, hadith of the Prophet And Subhanallah, one of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the especially one of the things that, so I don't want to go into too much details about the particulars, but this is worth mentioning right now. You know, Aisha radiallahu anha and his other wives saw a dimension of the Prophet others couldn't see, you know, all the, all the many of the main riwayat about ghusl and stuff, they come from the wives of the Prophet Aisha radiallahu anha. And so because they were able to witness how he was inside the house and how he did things inside the house. And they narrated that as you can see. And that had an advantage that compared to if, for example, he wasn't married sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, at the same time, it tell, shows us how flexible he was from time. He would have his main things he would do, but sometimes... He didn't do them. Sometimes he didn't do them out of the fear it would become uh, a wajib upon the ummah. Or that's just his, his nature was flexible. Uh, anyway, let us go on to the next tradition of the Prophet wasallam, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. And these are saying, these narrations are all saying something similar, but in each there's a different dimension. So, for example, أن نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا أراد أن ينام when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would make the decision, the irada to sleep وهو جنوب and he would be in a state of جنوب, uh, impurity توضع وضوء للصلاة he would make wudu like you do for salah قبل أن ينام before he would sleep. So, you see, all these narrations, when it came to sleeping, they said he did wudu and then slept. But for food, he did different things. Sometimes he did wudu, sometimes he only washed his hands. And then, ne this is very important for for us also. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَطْعَمْ And when he would want to eat, غَسَلَ فَرْجَهُ He would wash his private parts. وَمَضْمَضَ And he would wash his mouth. Okay, he would put water in his mouth. ثُمَّ أَطْعَمْ And then he would eat. Okay. So this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu May Allah help us to establish these sunnahs firmly and strongly in our lives. Because tahara is like one of those aspects of fitra. And these are sunnahs of fitra. Okay? And some people may argue, some of the scholars, that the sunnahs that have to do with fitra are the most important sunnahs, are amongst the most important sunnahs of the Prophet, those sunnahs that have to do with just being on fitra. And these sunnahs of tahara, have to do with those uh, aspects that have to do with uh, tahara and fitra. Now you've seen till now all the when it came to uh, uh, so you'll see this hadith. I'll explain it in a second. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi kanat lahu haja when the Prophet sallallahu would have some need ahlahu uh, for his family, like he had something to do for his family. Qadaha he would complete it. ثُمَّ نَامَ كَحَيْئَةٍ Then he would go to sleep immediately. لَا يُمَسَّ الْمَاء And he would not touch water. Okay? The sunnah of the Prophet before going to sleep, if you're going to go to the uh, bathroom or you have ghusl, is to do wudu. 
but the prophet was flexible according to the weather according to the the his 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 situation okay let's go on to the next hadith of the prophet now remember this is not a fit class so i won't be going into the details you know uh, of the uh of the fiqh aspects of this we'll do this as the last hadith for today and the nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam iqtasala min janaya when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would do ghusl from uh, being impurity fa bada ghasala kaffayhi thalatha so first thing the prophet would do in his sunnah because the sunnah is to wash your hands three times okay the wudu doesn't make washing the hands to begin with washing the hands that's not part of wudu itself thumma tawadda'a wudu lis-salah then he would do wudu like you do for salah so you know uh, many people know about uh, that there there are three ways okay you can just do ghusl the way ghusl is done or you can do ghusl and then wudu after the ghusl or in this hadith you'll see the prophet does wudu first and then takes ghusl okay so he washes his hand washing the hands and then the actual for the part of wudu starts with washing the face okay so fa ghasala kaffayhi thalatha the prophet would wash his hands three times thumma tawadda'a wudu lis-sala then he would do wudu like you do for sala thumma adkhala yadhahu fi al and then he would enter his hand into the water fa hallala biha asul al and then he would uh, you know bring water into the roots of his hair okay hatta yakhilu ila annahu istabara al bashar until it reaches the deep part of the skin thumma thabba ala ra'suhu ma thalatha then he would put water on his head specifically three times thumma afada ila asair al jasadihi al ma then after washing his head which is the sunnah then he would wash the rest of his body again these are how the prophet would do it which of these things is fard and not fard and which are wajib these are this is for in discussion for another time but the main point of this is to get a general idea and the best thing is to do all the sunnah so then that way you're clear so sometimes you can do wudu before doing ghusl sometimes you can do wudu after the ghusl sometimes you can just do ghusl itself okay but uh it was so i'll just leave it till here today and uh, so uh i hope you found this beneficial and is a good reminder to some of you i'm thinking if allah wills that if i did even one a week of musnad aisha radhiyallahu anha of this narrations of aisha there are 500 so uh technically i think we covered 1% already or uh, yeah something like this there are 500 and 50 i think so we covered about 16 of them right so if you find this helpful and you think this is helpful then please let me know in the comment section then i'll try to do i'll finish up all of these narrations from aisha radhiyallahu anha in her memory of in the memory of our mother uh, aisha radhiyallahu anha in our her memory we'll try to finish up this whole book if allah wills inshallah ta'ala so um let me know how you find this if you found this beneficial or not and the main purpose is to get an overview of the deen and to appreciate the deen and to practice more sunnahs and if you practice more sunnahs then inshallah allah will reward me for that and uh, and then that will be uh, and then you can teach others and so this way uh, okay jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh